Hello and welcome to the healing strategy number five of the Panacea model. Today we are discussing compassion and forgiveness. Oftentimes the stories we tell ourselves about why others behave the way they do does not always agree with the facts. We tend to judge or attack what we fear and don't understand. Yet there is always an explanation for another's behavior. When we step outside of our own limited perspective and try to see a solution from another's point of view, we are often confounded with a new and expanded awareness. Once we begin to recognize the negative influences that molded the weaknesses and shortcomings of another, we can begin to discover a more compassionate perspective while gaining a deeper understanding of those who may have wronged us or have behaved poorly. Connecting the dots by drawing more insightful conclusions about the past of others will most certainly evoke empathy within us. We may not agree with the choices or behaviors of others, nor do we fully understand the reasons for them, but we will have undoubtedly gained a more reasonable explanation for them. Therefore, learning the facts can enable us to have a change of heart toward others that we may have previously misjudged, including parents or, or other family members. Remember to extend compassion and understanding to the person you are applying the panacea model to. Realize they have had their own misfortunes and adopted dysfunctional behaviors and as a consequence, have inherited his or her own set of behaviors, beliefs, and challenges. This is also true about ourselves. When we don't place judgment toward our own past, and we make the connection and see the correlation toward our personal choices and shortcomings or unconscious behaviors, we can more easily extend much needed compassion even to ourselves especially while we are learning to heal and practice a better way of life. Here is an, an experiential exercise. The neuroscience of the defocus tool. Focusing attention away from yourself engages a defocusing circuitry in your brain, which allows new views and perspectives to emerge. The object of focusing on others or shifting our focus outside of ourselves onto separate objects, tasks, and our outside environments will inhabit the sensation of a more fluid sense of being, such as insightful, intuitive, feeling, and help shed old, undesirable identities and promote perceptual reframing by forming new neural structures. For example, if you are feeling down and hoping things will turn around or others will reach out, instead, remember to be the answer and change you wish to see. Practice this mindfulness strategy by redirecting your focus and attention on the needs of others by stepping outside of yourself and see how you can reach out and be there for others instead. To illustrate, if you are not feeling heard by others and would like to feel self-expressed and voice yourself more with others, then remember to be the solution and practice the love model that we discussed in the introductory course by reinforcing these steps. Lend an ear and listen to others with deeper intention. Listen and truly hear their voice on a soul level based on what they are and are not saying. If you're not feeling validated or understood by others and believe that your perspective should be considered, then make a sincere effort to listen and validate other people's perspectives and experiences. First, seek to understand before seeking to be understood. This might be difficult to do at first, but truly seek to understand. We don't all experience things the same way, which results in having differing perspectives and opinions, each of which are filtered and distorted by our own beliefs and paradigms, unmet needs and conditioning, but all are valid and deserve to be understood. Remember, the essential human need is to love and be loved. The need of every human soul is to be seen, felt, and heard. When we can take this to heart, it will enable us to extend compassion and empathy toward others and ourselves. As we do this, we course correct by resolving the conflict in a much more peaceful and effective way, essentially removing the conflict. This deepens our soul connection in our relationships with others while gaining a more loving and broader perspective. And by doing so, we meet our own needs without relying on others to have our own needs met. We build emotional trust in others and begin to metaphorically fill our own cup, increasing it with love toward ourselves and others.
Compassion creates awareness into our own need to hold compassion for both ourselves and others. Love is power. It's when we look at the pain within ourselves that we can recognize what others are going through and create a new sense of compassion for others rather than using projecting behaviors. Mastering the self starts with acknowledging where you want to improve and take ownership of it. We can learn healthier self-awareness and develop a greater ability to express compassion by asking ourselves these questions. Where are you applying love? Where are you withholding love and compassion? Are you withholding love from yourself, from a spouse, coworker, or any others? How do you show love and how can you start to demonstrate more compassion? Learn to say yes to love, compassion, and whatever serves you and the whole. Instead of entertaining what isn't working in your life, continue to ask yourself where are you withholding love and where you need more clarity to extend more love and compassion. What do you want to be and what do you want for yourself? What can you do to realign with the truth of who you are and honor what the storms are teaching you? What needs to be healed in your life? And when you ask these questions, are you realigning more quickly and easily? How do you relate to the specific area in which you feel that you've been out of alignment with? 